What's up, Simon and welcome back to another special episode because today we're celebrating another launch, the launch of Ionic version 6. It was actually silently announced last week, the official announcement came this week, right before the launch of my own Built with Ionic book, which you should definitely check out, builtwithionic.com, epic book. But today I want to show you everything that's new within Ionic version 6, so all the components, the design changes, the internal changes that you can benefit from, also how to update or migrate your application, and spoiler, it has really never been easier. At the same time, while it has never been easier, it is actually an epic update in terms of all the UI changes and uh, a few special new components that I think you will definitely love. I've already worked with Ionic version 6 since quite some time during the beta versions and the release candidate, so uh, everything felt already quite good at that time and now we've arrived at a stable version 6 of Ionic, so you can uh, install this in your applications with confidence and update to the next major version and I'm gonna show you what's new. Alright, so let's first talk about all the different design changes and new components. Uh, I think by looking at them you can get a quite good idea about uh, Ionic version 6. So let's start with daytime. Um, the daytime component was completely revamped. Uh, this is actually uh, what I use and what you see. So the complete standard Ion daytime now looks like this calendar implementation. There are a lot of things that you can select. You can set if you only want to select a date, a date and a year, <clears throat> a date and a time, or a time and a date. So you can combine those things. And uh, you might have to put uh, a bit of additional CSS into this, uh, especially if you want to show this in something like a modal, uh, which looks actually pretty cool. <coughs> Sorry, early morning. Um, and I've actually prepared uh, a new quick window tutorial about this, uh, which, yeah, should come pretty soon about this. But the new daytime is definitely cool, uh, looks great in iOS and Android. Um, if you have used this in your applications, uh, you might have to spend a bit of time to uh, upgrade to the new component, as it's really uh, quite different from previous versions. Anyway, it looks amazing. Uh, if you look at the official post, uh, you will also see a nice visual representation that could look like this. So uh, it's really an amazing component that looks good uh, as well on desktop. Now, the second component that I maybe like the most, uh, it's maybe ranked number two, is the Ion Accordion Groups. I'm gonna comment in this huge chunk. It's really, it's a repetition of a lot of things, so that's why it's that long. Uh, let's take a look at this. It's an, guess what, accordion. Uh, I can even um, somehow, yeah, control this with my keyboard, which is pretty cool. Um, I've already tried a lot of things with this and created a new uh, video about this for the future as well. You can nest the accordion, uh, you can uh, select different icons, have them in different slots, you can style all the components, uh, what did I say, yeah, you can nest them. <laughs> um, Really, there's a lot and it's a pretty easy setup. You surround something with an Ion Accordion group and then you start the actual Ion Accordions. So the different, uh, as you can see, colors and shapes. That's what we see up here at the top level. And then each of them has a header slot where we got the item and a content slot for the actual items in that accordion. It's a pretty easy setup and you can easily hook this up to your uh, JSON from the back end. Uh, so that should be a real great addition for a lot of applications. You can even picture this in a side menu. Um, a lot of use cases for this and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Now, um, more components. Uh, what do we have as well? Um, we had some general UI changes as well. Uh, in terms of the header. So uh, let's take a look at tab number three. And you see the iOS header has no border and only while I scroll the border comes in. So this is a change. Um, we previously already had the collapse condense function uh, property on iOS, which made this huge title in the page then move into the uh, title while you scroll. And now we also have the fade option for collapse, which brings this cool UI. Apparently, I think this has no effect on Android, um, but for iOS we can use it on both the Ion header and we could even add it to the footer. Let's give this a try real quickly and see if it works. Uh, Ion footer. 
Let's see. Uh, yeah, that looks great with a tap bar. So by now it's visible, but once we reach it, you see the color is gone, the border is gone, um, and it works in that place as well. On top of that, you see on this page, uh, well, just a dummy repetition of 50 items, but more important, there are two new slots on the Ion item called Helper and Error. So Helper, please enter your email, is what you see right here. A little uh, additional text for input labels, I think this is gonna be really helpful. Uh, so that's maybe why it's called Helper. Uh, and Error should be are visible when the input field is invalid. However, uh, I don't know if we have to connect it to ng model or reactive forms um, to see that error message, but I think this is a great addition since we use or need that in forms uh, very often. Um, if you got any questions about this, just let me know. I think uh, we might have another quick win on creating a cool form with that as well. Since uh, the release post here also shows this great uh, UI following material design on Android. Um, I haven't seen this kind of UI with the borders and the name here uh, in my testing application, so I'm gonna reach out to Ionic uh, to see if this is now the default or if we need anything special for that, but I'm sure you're interested in that, right? Leave a comment if you wanna see a uh, cool, building a cool form like this with Ionic version 6. Okay, so we got the header, we got that. Uh, let's move to my next tab, which holds another new component, and that is the Ion breadcrumbs component. So we got actually quite a lot of new components in uh, Ionic version 6. Breadcrumbs, pretty easy. Uh, you surround it with breadcrumbs and then put in the single breadcrumbs that you want. You could have different router links or general navigation links attached to the different items. I don't know if this will be used a lot on mobile, but I think on the web this can be really helpful. I've seen this on quite a few uh, websites. Um, there's also a lot, once again, that you can customize, like the icon, uh, how many you want to display. You can have uh, dots if you have too many items and then show a popover. Uh, so yeah, I actually think we should have another quick win on that as well, because this is just really the most basic form and you can do a lot more with the breadcrumbs component that I'll hopefully be able uh, to show you in a future video. Let's comment this out and take a look at something else. And that is um, a new select style on the web. Um, this is right now iOS. Can we, uh, let's just close this. Uh, so on the web, we can now control this with our keyboard as well, or on desktop in general. Uh, right now, it doesn't look too good. If we look into the example Ionic gives in the release post, it looks like this. So with a centered button and the box below. So just with a bit of additional CSS, we should be able to create an effect like this, which should work pretty well for a website with Ionic. I think that's a cool addition. They've moved a few things into the general direction of web and bigger screens. So uh, I think a lot of people will be happy about that change. Now, maybe the, the single best item that I've celebrated a lot already before the version 6 release is the new bottom sheet representation of the modal, which you can drag along, the background gets darker, the backdrop, uh, it snaps at different positions, it's completely smooth, and I just love this new component. There's so much you can do with this. Really, uh, I just released a new po guest post on the Ionic blog about different ways to embrace this new uh, component, and it's just amazing. I'm sure you're gonna love this as well. Now, how you get this is pretty easy. If you create a new modal, you just need to pass two properties to the creation of the modal. And in fact, I'm doing this in an interesting way. So the properties are breakpoints and initial breakpoints. Pretty easy, breakpoints array of where the modal snaps, initial breakpoint, at which breakpoint does it initially snap. Um, but what I've done is I also used the new inline version of a modal. Uh, so that means you don't have to generate another page for your modal. You just create an ion modal like this inline. You see we got an ng template and then a pretty standard setup uh, of an ionic page with a header and a content inside. And the only thing you need is a trigger. So in this case, trigger modal button is connected to this button up here. 
and clicking that button is already enough to open and trigger that modal. And I think that's gonna save some people a lot of time. You can also use this inline pattern, uh, I think for popovers as well. Uh, I guess for alerts, not yet. Although it would make sense since modal, popover and alert kind of like the general overlays. Um, so uh, ion popover can also be used declarative. That is good news. Uh, I haven't read anything else about, well, but that's anyway uh, a good start, I think. So give that as a try as well. Now, I think we've covered uh, all the new uh, most important items. Let me just quickly show you a cool representation instead of my boring accordion once again. So it could really look like that. You could structure a lot of information with that. Uh, the breadcrumbs, as you can see right here, could have a few dots, could have a uh, little popover. Um, there's a lot that you can do with the new components. Um, and as far as I've seen, they have all the slots defined, the CSS variables, the parts, so you can really make them yours. Of course, what's new as well is performance tooling, um, call custom elements build, uh, reduce, which will reduce the bundle size, hopefully faster components, um, new tooling available, which might be important to some. Uh, in general, if you're working with Ionic and Angular, you won't notice anything uh, about that. View routing, uh, yeah, if you're working with view, that will be important. Um, and something that's quite interesting, I don't know from which requirement this came, but they've added a way to um, customize the platform, uh, the platform detection code. So previously um, you could just use uh, platform is web is desktop is anything and you would get true or false but in the background it seems like there were some problems because as we can here see uh, the default desktop function returns false for devices with a touch screen and that might be a problem so in case you have special requirements and want to change how the platform check that runs in the background of Ionic works, you can now customize this within your Ionic config like they've shown here and then simply pass the configuration as usual to your Ionic module for root call. Pretty cool uh, extension, but uh, what I like actually I think even more is the TypeScript improvement. So. Um, if you've used infinite scroll in the past, you might have noticed that you pass an event to your function and you have to call target complete and TypeScript just complains because there are no types. No, guess what? We can now have all kinds of different events. For example, if you attach this to your select component, to your segment component, uh, to your infinite scroll component, you now got type things for all of this. So you got the interfaces here. Uh, you can dive into this and you can safely use them with TypeScript. I think this is like um, something you easily overlook uh, within that release because it's just mentioned here once, but I think it's actually a very, a very cool improvement for Ionic uh, and embraces TypeScript once more even better. Now, you might ask yourself, how do I migrate? Uh, there's a migration guide uh, for easy applications, it's really going to be a one line migration. Just install the latest version of Ionic 6. Uh, perhaps if your app's using an old version of Angular, you should update to 12 plus. That's anyway recommended. Um, here are just a few general changes, uh, which are not uh, in, in most applications, I guess. Uh, if you're using any uh, React or Vue, of course, check out those changes as well. But I guess most of you are still using Angular. So in those cases, you might have to check out uh, the updates regarding components, especially date time since it was completely changed. Uh, watch out for a video about this anyway coming next week. Um, there are minor changes regarding icons and inputs. Uh, one thing that might break stuff in your application is a change to the modal and uh, how it's used now since it's now converted to a shadow DOM element. Um, you could previously target custom styling like this and now have to target the specific part of the ion modal like this, the content part or the background part using CSS parts. Um, uh, same for popover, we see the same change, you now have to use parts as well. 
Um, and there are some minor changes uh, that you can go through. You know best if you're using those components in your applications or not, but there's not like a renaming to other components. Really, daytime is the only component that might uh, raise some problems in your migration. Perhaps you're lucky and you're not even using daytime. So in those cases, you're gonna have a very easy migration and I highly recommend it. Ionic version 6 is stable. Um, there's really no reason to not update. You always get benefits with the latest versions and uh, you're gonna of course benefit from all the future updates and uh, you don't wanna update from version four to version seven or eight in one point. So try to get to the latest version. It has really never been easier than this and you get a lot of cool new components. Alright, that's mostly it for today, but I also want to plug in a few other updates since we didn't have an Ionic news flash for quite some time. So there are two other things that I want to mention. First, Ionic now has a Discord channel that you can join. You can check it out on the official Ionic blog, all the information about the Discord channel and how you can join. So that is the new place to ask your question if there's anything about Ionic. Also, all the Ionic Ionic insiders like myself and Josh and uh, Hoche, everyone is in there to answer your questions. On top of that, uh, something that's actually a bit in the past already and was announced as well is the deprecation of Ionic Native. I know a lot of people are watching this video about Ionic version 6, so I just want to uh, put it in here as well that Ionic Native was renamed to now being Awesome Cordova Plugins. Simply because the name Ionic Native uh, was confusing. It worked in the past for access to native functionalities, but now we got Capacitor as well and those things led to a lot of confusion. I'm gonna talk more about this and my expectations for uh, what we see with Ionic uh, to be changed in the next year in another video at the end of this year. But just uh, take a look at this as well. Ionic native deprecated now. All right, I think that covers everything so far about Ionic version 6. It is really an epic version. You should check it out. For most of us, this should be a pretty easy migration. Just install the latest version and see if your application is still working. Otherwise, you might have to touch the modal, the popover styling, and especially the daytime component. But those are really like the biggest issues that you could encounter in your applications. But otherwise, I feel very confident that a lot of you will directly benefit from Ionic version 6 and you can get started to integrate the bottom sheet, the accordion, the breadcrumbs, the new daytime. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that, you see. If you'd also like to learn how to build epic interfaces with Ionic, you should check out my latest book built with Ionic. During the launch you can still get it for 20% 20, 20 off until Friday night. So this video comes out Thursday. Until Friday you got time to get the book builtwithionic.com. Uh, supports me, supports this channel, um, supports everything that I do to create more free content for you in the future. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like, subscribe, share the video, do everything you can and of course enjoy Ionic version 6. Applause and congrats once again to the Ionic team for their hard work. This is really a great release. I will hopefully catch you next week, like always. So, happy coding, Simon.